Welcome back to Road Race Retro. Did Corp Art steal parts? So let's get straight into it. Obviously, this is my Corp Art app. I'll open it up and I'll show you basically the up. So bear with me for two seconds. There we are. That was the price it was won at. Don't mind telling you. There's the car. Horrible stickers. Airbags out. Um, as you can see, it's not too bad. Bit out of line at the front end. The back end's all good. No issues. Both sides are cool. In the inside where the problem is, so as you can see, they've pinched the gear knob there, which I'll circle now. There you go, so that's missing and it shouldn't have been. Back's okay, no issues in there. Engine's all good, or so it looks. Non-runner, so there you go, it's not running. Front end, badge crack, missing a, a grill, not too bad. Point of impact. Where the crash sensor is, that's why the bags have gone off. As you can see, obviously the bags have come out and cracked the screen with the pressure. Boot and everything's fine, no shoes there. Disgusting stripes on the roof still. Pinch the aerial, so that's missing also. And that's what I can get from the photos. Yeah, so basically, as you can see from the, the previous clip, obviously the reason I put the screenshot in there is to basically talk you through the, the process of what I'd saw and then basically get us onto where I am now. So what I did was, when I first bought the car, I basically put a post in the Up GTI owners group, just, just like I usually do. Um, I'm one of these guys who likes to get into the car groups, like to see what modifications people have done to the car, um, what sort of things they've done suspension wise, exhaust wise, and just like to kind of get a grasp of what each car community is like. There's some good ones and there's some bad ones, but the Up GTI was a, was a pretty nice reception and seemed like some decent people owned the car. So I put a picture of it in there and said, oh, like, that's a Corp Art car. I've been waiting for a red one for about six, seven months now. Finally managed to put my hands on this one. And hey, presto, literally five months later, believe it or not, the old owner popped up and inboxed me and said, oh, it was my little car. Um, I work for an estate agent down south and our manager bought four brand new red Up GTIs for all of the valuers to go around and do valuations and house viewings and th this one was mine so I had a bit of a chat with her turns out she had looked after the car and I just thought you know it would be an opportunity maybe to ask her some questions seeing as though she'd messaged me I just asked her I said what was the situation with the car when it went to Copart and she basically told me that the car was fully running there was no issues with it it actually drove onto the Copart truck when it was collected uh, there was no gear stick missing. There was no light switch missing. There was no upper light switch missing. Obviously, but yeah. Um, and it was running. Most importantly, it was running. As you, as you know from the previous clip, the car was on the Addison non runner. So, here's where it gets interesting. Now, what I believe has actually happened here is, bearing in mind, Corp Art have now stopped all viewing. So, you can't physically go in and view a car. All the offer is a WhatsApp call. You get 10 minutes for the WhatsApp call, and it costs you... Uh, I think it's 10 or 15 pound for the pleasure so you can't actually go and view stuff so what that means is nobody from the general public has been able to go into the yard and mess with this car nobody's been allowed to touch it so the only people that's actually had hands or been able to be close to the car um would be would be two options would be the transporter guy the chap who picked it up now sometimes copart have big trucks that pick them up and they also subcontract people from outside just normal recovery drivers can subcontract and collect vehicles for them so when it's gone to the yard obviously the corp art have got staff there they deal with photographing the car any video walk rounds putting it into position in the yard so there's only two people I'd access to which is the recovery driver which is transported it to the yard and the people who work at corp art so what I think's happened is with the car being down as a non-runner you might be thinking well why would somebody even bother themselves to do that people who actually work for Copart can bid and buy cars from the Copart auction and so can the drivers the drivers can have accounts as well so I think either the driver or one of the staff in the yard has seen the little car liked it and thought you know I would probably just like to win that so what I'm going to do is we'll pinch some interior parts I'll keep hold of them so at least when the photos are taken basically the car looks crap the airbags are out it's got no gear stick um, and most importantly they've immobilized the car so it wasn't running Obviously, a non-running car in any auction is going to do a lot less money, isn't it? So, I think they've immobilised the car on purpose to try and get a bargain out of it. Um, when the car came to me, a friend of mine who's, who's quite 
but it was quite mechanically minded. Luckily enough, it landed just for a bit of a bit of crack, really, and just a bit of a chat. And we started looking around the car. I thought, you know, I wonder if they just took the gear, gear gator off, thinking they'll win it, and they've probably hit it in the car somewhere. So we're looking around the car. Uh, what do we find under the passenger seat? They unplugged the ECU. So someone's physically been under the passenger seat, unplugged the ECU, so that the car wouldn't run. Because when I put the key in the ignition, I got all of the the lights for the actual like head unit, the stereo. Um, pardon me, connect the Bluetooth and everything, there was no issues, but the car clocks wouldn't illuminate and it wouldn't run. So anyway, a friend of mine plugs the ECU back in, hey presto, car fires interaction, first flick of the key. So they've definitely 100% immobilised this car, so all I'm saying is, at the minute, it's just a video to warn people that Copart isn't all champagne, caviar and roses, it doesn't work that way, just be very, very careful of what you're doing. I'm not trying to... Um, what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to slander the place, but all I'm saying is to be very, very careful of what you're buying. I know there's a lot of YouTubers at the moment doing well with content, and obviously I salute them for buying from Court Park. They're absolutely flying. It's great. I know of two or three different YouTubers who are flying um, with literally buying cars from Court Park, but what you've got to remember is um, the, the video side of things like the internet and YouTube, it's not always that easy. Somebody who knows what they're doing, somebody like myself or another YouTuber, might make it look easy the process of buying fixing sorting everything out and they might make it look cheap but believe you me they aren't all bargains there are some snags that you need to be very careful of there's a lot of unsavory people put cars into core part and unless you know what you're looking for you can get into a lot of trouble and it can cost you a lot of money so just be mindful of that when you're buying and what i would say to you is always do your research guys don't risk your own hard-earned money by just having a gamble and just saying, oh, well, that looks all right, I'll just buy that. Do your research and look into what you're buying and know what you're buying. Now, one thing as well, I'm not going to run you through it all because I don't want this video to run on for ages and just delve into, like, core part and tell you everything about it, but I've learned the hard way. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm an expert. I don't say I'm an expert. I think I'm good at buying from core part. I normally get good margins and good profit margins out of everything that comes out of there, but that's only because I've learned the hard way and I've lost a lot of money over the years. I've bought cars that basically turned up and weren't what I thought they were going to be and they've cost me in the arse. And that's that's the be all and end all of it. I have been burnt and I have lost money and I've learned the hard way, but through doing that, I'm now in a position because I've had that hardship and those losses that I've learned from them and I've moved on. So what I would say to you is if you are going to buy from Coop Art, make a phone call, ring them, and what you need to understand is it's very, very important. A lot of people will overlook it. When the numbers are scribed on the window, in that yellow pen that you see in all the auctions, if you follow Coop Art, all of those letters and symbols on the window have a meaning. Even the actual, there's a, there's a letter. So on the window, you've got the lot number and the white sticker. The letter on the end as well also means something. So if you are going to buy from Coop Art, don't get caught out like many are doing at the moment, thinking it's easy. Ring Coop Art up. Ask them what all of the things on the window means. Get people to explain it to you. Get a notepad, write each letter down, and write the meaning next to the letter so that you aren't getting burnt and you're buying decent quality cars. So, again, without going too far into it, how, how do I do it? I'll simplify it and make it very, very quick and easy. I only ever buy insurance cars. I don't buy cars that have come directly in from Coop Art because they do buy their own stock in from motor traders and they buy problem cars and they put their own cars through the auction Coop Art and it's not illegal to do that they can advertise their own cars but what you normally find is it's basically shit it's shit which motor traders like me have had they've had problems with they want out of they want an easy sale and they can't be asked to deal with it so motor traders put shit in there Coop Art puts shit in there and if you get caught with that it can be very very costly so just know what you're buying I only ever buy insurance cars so I only ever buy cars that have basically been involved in um, RTC road traffic collision or accidents on the road and the reason I buy like that is because you stand a better chance of buying a good damaged car if it's been hit while somebody's actually been using it on the road I know that might sound mad you're buying a damaged car but these cars that have been taken away from people are the daily cars cars that they've looked after and cars that they didn't want taken away from them just unfortunately they've had an accident and they haven't had a choice and the cars have had to go to court part so just be careful guys and make sure you you buy wisely that's all i'm going to say um there's a, a funny group on facebook which i always have a bit of crack and i just have a bit of a laugh with it because um some people are just green as grass in there and people really shouldn't be buying out of court part uh if you get yourself onto the group on facebook it's called Copart victims that'll 
wise you about some of the, the shit that goes on with Court Bart, and there's some pretty leery goings on, believe you me, a lot of people's had bad experiences, so there are some good experiences, it is good Court Bart, if you use it in the right way, obviously the Up GTI, um, for me, is, is an absolute bargain, the money that this car actually cost me, I'm going to have this car sorted, back to its original condition, on the road i mean i am going to mod the car obviously the same as i do with everything but at the minute it'll be a standard car back on the road and i've worked it out the recommended retail price for the car that i've got with the miles it's got on is 13 to 14 grand in the open market today i think i'm actually going to have this back on the road and ready to go for for six grand so it's less than half price so there are bargains to be had i'm just saying not slagging core part off but i'm just giving people warning that there are pitfalls and just be very careful of what you're doing. It's your money you're playing with. You work hard to earn it. Don't give that away to some some scumbag who's put a car in there to catch somebody else out. Just be very, very careful with, with how you're doing it. But um, enough of me waffling on anyway. What I'll do is I'll cut the next clip. It is very, very windy today. The sound might be a bit poor, so I'm going to try and sort that. But I'll give you a look at the up GTI. Uh, I'm proud with what myself and Dave's done within the last... We've only had the car 24 hours, and I feel like we've not turned it around, but we span it around quite a lot. We've got all the stickers off. The paint works looking nice again. Although it is a bit dusty at the moment, because I have, I have driven it up to a friend of mine's to get the airbag sorted. So bear with us. But I'll give you a look at the up GTI um, and where we're getting on with it. I'll build this one into a series as well. So as we start modding it and stuff, uh, this also might make a trip to the Nurburgring. I don't know yet. So bear with us. But um, yes, thanks for staying tuned. Hopefully this is an interesting video. Um, We'll give you a little look at the up GTI. So here's the little car as it sits now. Obviously it has changed a little bit from when it was in Corp Art. I'll flip the camera around and give us a run round and I'll point out the damage as well. So as you can see, it doesn't quite look the same car. Although it is dusty, the paint underneath is actually very, very, very nice. As you can see, it's lovely and clean. The st stickers have come off quite well. And I was a little bit worried because obviously red paint's beautiful, but it does paint fade. And I was worried when taking the stickers off that it might leave marks, but it actually hasn't. We've got three dints in that quarter. I'll just try and move the phone so you can see them. They need to come out, but genuinely, it's such a nice little car. It's obviously been very well kept. So on the front bumper, that is the point of collision just up from the fog light i know it sounds mental but that's where the crash sensors are so it's basically hit the crash sensor perfectly which unfortunately has then put the airbags out which is a shame obviously as you can see it's just pushed the bumper over just ever so slightly it's cracked the grill badge i popped it off and we've lost the little strip which i've now bought and i've got that there um, also obviously with it hitting the, in that corner it's pushed it over and popped the bump out of its clips just there and the bonnet's out of line but do you know something this fix is so simple it is so easy to do it's a matter of literally unbolting the front end which is straightforward lining everything back up repainting that black plinth on the front of the bumper and obviously getting the body shop there basically smooth it all out and get it nice um, but yeah I'm over the moon which is a really really nice little car and as I said I have wanted one of these for quite a while now Obviously, we just took the airbags out there for now. As you can see, it is running. Um, we've bought like a little uh, gear gate to match the seats, but we're just waiting for the new gear knob and everything coming. There's the new badge in the footwell and the new grill strips. But the trim and everything's brand new. Make a lovely little car. Obviously, for those that don't know, just a little one litre TSI engine. So for me, for the daily commute, it's perfect. 115 horsepower, uh, 50 to 60 miles a gallon. Still really quick for a little car and tunable. So these go to stage two and they do about 180 horsepower, which as you can imagine in this little, well, rollerboot, 180 brake will be very quick. So I am looking forward to that. But uh, thanks for staying tuned. This is the end of the first video with the Up GTI. And it's just a bit of an insight into how to buy out a core part and basically just to watch what you're doing. So thanks for staying tuned. Obviously, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. And you will get future updates on the GDI, amongst other things.